hitting the go live button so that we're live streaming. And we're there. All right. Um, looks like we have a few more folks on board. So. So you now all know. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, on behalf of uh, co-chair Talisha Sainville, I'm Greg Alvarez, uh, co-chair of the Housing and Land Use Committee. We are here this evening um, to convene with one um, agenda item that uh, that has come up, and there's been uh, there is a bit of a uh, time pressure, so to speak, in terms of our response, and that's why uh, we look to schedule this meeting the first of the month. So. Um, Thank you all for joining this evening uh, to those who uh, will be joining along. Um, and so the uh, topic for this evening is the Brooklyn Borough President's proposed uh, comprehensive plan initiative. Um, it has gotten off the ground. And um, at this point, the uh, Borough President's office has issued uh, what's called the existing conditions report, which um, was uh, prepared by uh, various stakeholders um, in an effort to compile um, certain uh, demographic and other existing conditions within uh, the borough to help guide this comprehensive plan process. Uh, the initiative itself was prompted by the borough president's desire to uh, tie land use to uh, health uh, outcomes within the borough to see uh, what could be done uh, from a land use perspective uh, to help improve those. Um, and so the first step was to gather the data that, that, that currently exists to, to, to help guide um, those initi this initiative. Um, and what the borough president had asked for was input from residents and, and all other um, you know, interested parties uh, within the borough. And what they did was they issued a form where they had issued prompts uh, where you could fill in answers based on your reactions to this existing conditions report. And so um, in, in response to that, um, we've uh, um, taken a, an initial look at it. And so we wanted to bring the committee together to, to, to have a conversation about um, considerations that, that should be included with the ultimate goal of um, submitting something in um, to the borough president's office. Uh, they did set an initial deadline of January 31st, but uh, District Manager uh, Sean Campbell has asked for uh, some just additional time, so so that's why um, we're meeting tonight so that we can turn around and present that. Uh, we've put together, um, uh, largely on the initiative of Chair Brown, to um, uh, put together some considerations to um, think about um, in um, in in reviewing those those that those data points and and things that they may have missed and things that are of particular importance to the district. So um, District Manager Campbell has put together a letter as well to for those considerations. So what we'd like to do tonight is review the information that that we have gathered to this point and, and present it to the committee so that we can talk a little bit about it um, and then from there um, to help guide us towards. Um, that, that submission to the borough president's office. So uh, we wanna give you a little bit of background here. And I think without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, our chair, Joanne Brown and uh, district manager, Sean Campbell to provide that information. I'm trying to think maybe um, Sean, if you could just put up, like we talked about maybe briefly the existing um, conditions report, just so that we can indicate what it is. And I know you put it in the chat. Um, in terms of what um, what it is, and then based on that framing, we can turn it over to Chair uh, Brown to, to talk about uh, perhaps some of the responses to what they prepared. Yeah, the link is in the chat for anybody who wants to open that up and um, and sort of scroll through the maps. Is that what you meant? Do you... okay. Right. Yeah, you could peruse it on your own, but if it, I don't know if you can maybe pull it up real quick just to show them, like give them an example of what we're talking about here in terms of what, what they've prepared. Um, I think I can do it as I well. I can also do that if that's helpful because I can probably share my screen. That would that. be helpful. Okay. And then we don't have to share and share back. Yeah. 
Okay. 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 Just give me one <laughs> Sorry, second. I'm not more sure that that, necessary. That's um, okay. I'm not sure that link works either. I'll test that out and, and uh, re-up it if it's the wrong, if it's not going anywhere. That's okay. I'm going to go direct. Okay. okay. Perfect. Good. Um, and then just quickly, I do want to recognize that um, that Bill Cooch is on this call with us, and he's one of our planning fellows working on our housing inventory. So I just wanted to give him a quick shout out, and I'm going to mute myself and let Joanne go from here. Okay. Um, give me one second. Um, so I'm just going to get the plan. Get the plan second. Then while we're waiting, can you do you mind putting in the link? I just clicked on it and it does work, Sean. But for people who weren't here um, before the meeting started, they don't have the link in the chat. So can you And while you're doing that, I'd just like to mention as well in terms of where we sit in the process. We're still very early in the process, but we have received this first work product. But there will be subsequent I guess, issuances of uh, materials after it. But, but what we want to do is get sort of on the ground floor of all of this as they um, try to create the actual plan. So just wanted to mention that as well. Great. Um, so I can share the comprehensive plan. And since I've been in two borough board meetings about the plan, I'll just quickly scroll through it and point through some highlights. Um, if no one, if, if our um, committee members and board members are not familiar with it. Okay. So gonna share the screen. Okay. So, um, this is a report that was prepared for the Brooklyn Borough President uh, and his office. It's called Planning for uh, Public Health in Brooklyn. And this report is the existing condition report, which will guide the Borough President's comprehensive plan. Um, so I'll just scroll through and orient you as to some highlights. There are some invited advisory committee members. You see them here on the right of your screen. Um, uh, there's Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce, uh, Riseboro Community Partnership, um, Make the Road, so on and so forth, Coney Island Alliance. So as we get into the contents, um, we start to look at um, this is an amalgamation of data that they pulled from several different sources. The American Community um, Survey, which is run by the census, the, the census to the 2020 census uh, data. Um, and so originally what this plan was supposed to be, as it was presented to us in September um, at a borough board meeting was how can we improve public health or how can the borough president improve uh, uh, Brooklyn's public health in a comprehensive plan that aligns with land use. So in order to determine where we exist, uh, he created this. So I'll just kind of move several sections. We have uh, demographics, uh, and then we look, look at, you know, how all the, the borough is broken out in race and, and ethnicity. Um, median age. And so I'll just always sort of, you know, land on CB14 so you can look at this data. That's the mean age. And this this actual um, map is one thing that we have added as a deficiency. We sort of feel like that the, the ages are, um, or at least the mean age and way that it's presented in this map is, uh, is deficient. We'd like to see below 33 uh, years of age. Uh, sex ratios, limited English proficiency, um, and then you can see some hot spots down uh, in the uh, west, the southern, the west and the south of our district, um, educational attainment, uh, share of foreign born population, which is quite, in, which is quite important to our district. You can see, you know, here in the northeast and in the west and then south. Uh, and then another topic was health. 
So like life expectancy, premature mortality, asthma, hospitalizations with asthma with children, um, so on and so forth. And then additional maps. So here, this one in life expectancy compared to New York City. Um, this is where we land in CB14. You can see that we have some hot spots here in the just, you know, sort of the central south, and then a lot of hot spots here in the northeast. Premature mortality completely in line with CB17 and, and CB18 uh, as we go east. Uh, adult asthma concentrated in the northeast. Hospitalizations in children, we have this pocket right here and then overall sort of half of the district. Adult cancer, which is uh, prevalent in the south. Um, I'm not going to get too granular, but this is, I just wanted to orient you in <clears throat> some of the, you know, some of uh, the really, you know, um, interesting data that was, that came out of this report. Um, and it's going to be a great resource for us for a couple of years going forward. Um, let me just get to some of the other topics that they put in here. Don't get dizzy. I apologize. Food insecurity. Um, this is the legend. We land somewhere between 12.4% uh, and 5.3%. It's prevalent throughout the entire district. Um, uh, residents who haven't received the first dose of any COVID vaccine. Uh, there's the legend for that. So below 60%, you can see concentrations in the Southwest. And then deaths. Um, you know, there's an overlay here greater than 50%, uh, which is the uh, BIOPOC uh, share of deaths. Um, that's that green sort of hash overlay socioeconomic. So on and for, so forth. So this is quite an excellent plan. Um, or, sorry, quite an excellent report. I encourage everyone, uh, especially on this committee, but also um, on our board to go ahead and look at the data that they came out with it. My assumption is that this is the most up to date that we can, you know, tamp into. So I'm not moderate, moderating this meeting, so I'm going to leave it to the co-chairs to answer questions. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I see there are a few questions so far um, before we get to uh, potential responses, which uh, we'll get into in a moment. But um, I, I saw that Carl raised your hand, uh, raised his hand. So uh, please, uh, please go ahead. Hey, good evening, folks. <clears throat> nice to see everybody. And so. <clears throat> My question is brief, and so, um, and I apologize because I arrived late and I arrived at the point when people were talking about a letter um, from the community board. Uh, but basically, my question is for us as individual um, community board members is the thought that those of us who do read the report, you know, we fill out the feedback form <clears throat> submitted individually and then also let the community board office know, hey, I submitted the form and this is what I said, or is this more up or is the thinking something more like, hey, we review the report and then whatever things we find um, of note, we share those with the community board office and then that all gets collated into some sort of letter that it get, then gets sent. Like, I'm just wondering what is the path? Because I have no problem doing both, you know, I'm just wondering if either of those two options are what's being considered, or if there's another option completely, that's it. Thank you, Carl. Um, I could actually jump in there. a little bit on that if you don't mind. Sure. I mean, the, the time to fill out that form um, is actually passed. The deadline was yesterday. I think they are leaving the form up for our, to the end of this week. Um, um, I think that that's still publicly accessible. I think this conversation is about what the board as a board is going to respond to um, and individuals can do individual things, but not as board members. Um, um, and then, if, you know, Joanne and Greg and Talisha, if I if I misspoke there, jump in now. OK. Then the thing I wanted to add to Joanne's description of the data and, and, and quick tour of those maps is for those of you who are going to take a closer look at these maps, 
please be careful about how they're laid out because um, Greg's laughing because he's heard me say this 10 times now. The legends on those maps or the or the categories of um, different, like the age groups aren't broken down into um, equal distributions. Um, so from a data perspective, it's just strange and wonky to me. Um, it's kind of the opposite of wonky. But but if just look at the look at the the measurements that they're using. And there's one with age that starts like zero to thirty-three, and then the next category is thirty-three to thirty-seven. And then so it's just like how do you go from a thirty year group to a five year group and what are you representing with those uneven distributions and then the last age you can be is 85 so there's no i mean that's i don't i won't say the morbid thing but um just be wary of that when you're looking at these maps and be thinking about what it is that this is actually illustrating it's certainly not illustrating like an even distribution yeah it's for sure um i'm sure they took different data points from you know different sources, and I'm sure that's that's what's caused it. Um, yeah, Joanne is experiencing some connectivity issues, so we'll uh, we'll see how she's able to uh, reconnect. In the meantime, I do see a question from Barton, so please. Always happy to help kill some time. So, as I understand it, the comprehensive plan is really mainly focused on public health. Is that correct? Th that's our understanding. Um, so, the, so the issues concerning housing and land use are sort of deemed uh, ancillary, or basically they're going to be looking at the decisions that they'll be recommending, you know, changes to for housing and land use with through the lens of public health, correct? Not necessarily through zoning and distribution and any of our normal issues, you know, in housing, but it it's sort of holistically within the concept of public health, right? Yeah, well, that's interesting. Actually, I'll turn it over to Joanne. Go ahead, you can, uh, you can discuss that if you like. So from the initial presentation in September, it was looking at public health and solving those issues through land use. Because when you think about uh, with regards to the city charter and how the borough president <clears throat> can um, make sweeping changes, it is through land use. So it makes sense that his interest in public health is going to be tied to um, uh, influencing uh, land use to solve those problems. So it's not ancillary, it's actually a direct connection. So then we're sort of charged with saying, we think that by changing this and that in the land use, uh, rule book, et cetera, in CD14 that we feel that health, public health could best be served. But so it has to sort of focus on that. It's not sort of larger, broader issues pertaining exclusively to land use. It's all viewed within the, the lens of public health. Uh, we think uh, the only reason <laughs> that, <laughs> the only reason I say that is because um, the the, the expansive nature of, of the data that they pulled um, suggests that they may have um, perhaps a larger focus. But, but the data are great. I got to say, I am, I am really, really impressed scrolling through this. This is just a fabulous data set for us to have. Um, but again, that, that was just my question. You know, if we are going to provide a response, we don't say, yeah, we'd like more affordable housing because we just want more affordable housing. We have to say, because we feel that it will help the community from a public health aspect. Well, yeah, maybe that's a good transition to um, pot potential responses and because um, what we have for you is is a table that, that we've been sort of tinkering with to, um, to, to give you an idea of how everything really is uh, quite interrelated. And uh, Joanne, I know you are having connectivity issues and I know you were going to share a screen, but if not, um, I'm, I'm totally good at the moment. Um, oh, okay. I did see that Stephen had a hand up, so I'll let you decide if you want me to go ahead and talk about that or take the question first. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see Stephen's question. Yes, please, uh, Stephen, by all means. Thanks. Um, 
I was looking at the, um, I was scrolling through and I saw in the zoning districts, um, it looks like uh, a, a small portion of the Western part of CB 14 that is west of Coney Island Avenue. Um, there's like an overlay that says special purpose districts. I, I, I was just wondering if anyone could provide any clarity as to what, what the special purpose district is and what, what it means uh, there. A good question. Yeah, which, which yeah, which map page, are you looking at? Page forty-eight on, on the presentation where it says zoning districts. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's probably the uh, Ocean Parkway special purpose district, but um, I'd have to confirm that. I mean, generally, special purpose districts can have all sorts of you know, purposes, so to speak. Um, but usually, it's it, it's designed to uh, you know focus on a particularized area within within the city so um I'm trying to think of one like there's a uh i think the midtown special purpose district is for purposes of broadway theaters if i recall correctly but um it uh, actually uh, sean are you raising your hand do you have okay please well, I, I wasn't on that. I was just agreeing with you that that's the Ocean Parkway Special Purpose District, and, and I can figure out where it is in, in everybody's little orange book, so you can read more to, more about that there. It, it, it I believe it's on raises. page 180. Oh, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Do, do you want to, do you, want to uh, you know, read us the, the basics of it, if you have it up? Do you have it? Do you have a handy list? Yeah, um, the special Ocean Parkway district encompasses Ocean Parkway between Prospect Park and Brighton Beach, as well as a band of blocks east and west of the thoroughfare. It was created in 1977 to enhance the qualities of this broad landscape boulevard, which had recently been designated a scenic landmark and the neighborhoods immediately flanking it. The regulations were intended to preserve the existing scale and character of this surrounding area and require large front setbacks and landscaping for buildings along the parkway itself. Sorry to jump in there. I just figured that <laughs> if I had it up, no, it would thanks. be helpful. <laughs> That's great. Okay, uh, so Steve, does that answer your question for the, uh, as to that? Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you, Liz, for jumping in there. Yes, thank you. Okay, um, see the questions. I, can, oh, I, did have a, I did have a question. Well, a, a sure. comment too about kind of going back to um, um, the conversation about data and, and, when, and really Barden's question, but it's because it's so early in the process, as you noted at the beginning, and this is just descriptive data, I feel like a big part of our responsibility is to help them see, um, you know, tease out the data that they're presenting to us with the more nuanced um, version and, and, and take advantage of the opportunity to reiterate a lot of the stuff that's in our district needs statement. So just quickly, when they talk about, you know, um, language, you know, limited, limited English proficiency um, in districts where that those LEP um, residents um, speak one or two major languages in that district, I'm thinking Sunset Park, Chinese, Spanish versus our district that has 30 different first languages, that there's something about language diversity that isn't captured when you're just going strictly for the LEP stuff. So just helping them drill down on the context behind those that those data are, you know, kind of what the narrative is about. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. So, yeah, I think that that helps, uh, again, lead us towards um, uh, how we preliminarily trying to structure, you know, our responses to, to what we've seen so far. So, um, Joanne, if you are with us um, and can uh, and can invoke the share screen, uh, we may want to take a look now at, um, at, at the table where we're trying to you know, formulate that response. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, very observant of Barden to say that, yes, we should be focusing on, um, you know, public health and how these conditions in our district can be remedied through land use and zoning. So, um, we, you know, over the past uh, two weeks or so, as we saw the deadline for comments coming up, we created a table. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention is that when I say public health, what I actually mean is the social determinants of health. Uh, so the social determinants of health are conditions in the environment where people are born, live, learn, work, play, worship, 
and age and affect a wide range of health, functioning, and quality of life outcomes and risks. So I'm going to share my screen and I'll show you the table that we've been working on. Okay. All right. So um, the title, Social Determinants of Health and Land Use Interventions in Brooklyn Community District 14. Um, so for so one of the social determinants of health is economic stability. Um, we added uh, available commercial storefront usage secondary to pandemic flight. And in the column that moves to the right um, is the um, Health and Human Services Healthy People 2030, which uh, basically creates goals for the people of the United States in which to pr improve their health. Uh, and these are leading health indicators. So this indicator here reduced the proportion of adolescents exposed to tobacco marketing uh, relates to this method of economic stability. So in a land use intervention that we suggest to Borough Hall is to create diverse retail operate uh, options in, high, in areas with high commercial vacancy. Um, one thought that we had was to expand zoning groups, uh, zoning group designations along commercial corridors to specify use. So you know that um, uh, within each of our commercial corridors, we have groups. So community facilities are groups three and four. Ordinary retail is group six. And then uh, tobacco and cannabis is actually grouped in with ordinary retail. So in our narrative, we say, that the COVID pandemic created a surge of empty com commercial storefronts. Many storefronts are recovering rent rolls by leasing to smoke shops. Through more specific zoning of commercial groups, i.e. expanding group six, which is just ordinary retail, to specify more retail types along commercial corridors, we can limit the incongruity that tobacco and cannabis sales has near schools, houses of worship, congregate housing, et cetera, and specified here in group three and four. So I'm going to use this as an example of how we looked at uh, improving uh, the social determinants of health, align uh, community district 14 with healthy people 2030, um, and those leading health indicators. Um, so this is a work in progress. You're going to see some things that have been hashed out and stuff. So <clears throat> one indicator, and there's a group of these, um, reduce the proportion of adolescents, young adults who aren't in school or working, increase employment uh, in working age, age people, and increasing the proportion of children living with at least one parent who works full time. So our intervention, our land use intervention suggestion was to revisit and update the New York City Council plan engines of opportunity as it relates to retainment and creation of zoning for industrial activities and industrial employment in Brooklyn. Um, so it would be revitalizing manufacturing corridors with local zoning text amendments to maximize FAR and height and limit employee parking requirements to maximize job opportunities by designating these industrial business zones. So there to our west, there is a corridor of M1-1, M1-2, M1-1 zoning districts, and it presents an opportunity for industry in industry jobs and traditional transitional jobs for CD4 residents. And then we note here that these areas are fully accessible by the westbound B50, B35 bus and the F line. Um, again, I, I don't wanna go ahead and, you know, read all of the things that we've put into this document because I want you to get a sense of what we did here. Um, but here's another one. So, um, uh, percent renters, household gross rent, 30% or more of income. So according to the existing conditions report that we showed you earlier, it's between 48% and 64%. And then grouped with that is another metric from another map, which was percents of overcrowded households, uh, more occupants than um, rooms between, and it's between 5.7%. Um, and from the next column to your right, reduce the proportion of families that spend more than 30% of income on housing. So that's a, 
uh, social determinant of health dash uh, 04 by HHS or the healthy people in 20, 2030. Um, so the actual metric for CD14 is 48.5%, which uh, they pay more than 30% of their gross income for rent and utilities. So our suggestion for landing, landing uh, sorry, land and house, ho housing and land use was mandatory inclusionary housing at both deeply the affordable and the workforce options, continue to maintain rents at 30% of income on housing, and does not provide enough unit sizable uh, unit sizes suitable for affordable housing for families. So in our narrative, we say that the share of renters across CD14 who are rent burden or spend more than 30% of their income on rent and utilities each month remains high. Although with the best of intentions, MIH persists in perpetuating this condition. In addition, when housing developers assign units in new housing, the stock suited to house families is woefully scarce. So we brought in this example of 1640 Flatbush Avenue. If you remember, we heard this hearing in April of 2022. Uh, when we broke down the amount of units that were in um, for affordable housing, it was nine studios, 21.5% of the affordable housing, 17 one bedrooms or 40%, 16 two bedrooms, 38%, and zero three bedrooms. So we state that the breakdown does not support family occupancy. And we added that um, the MIH option for that particular development hadn't been selected at the time of the hearing. So um, in this case, we talk about asthma, we talk about life expectancy, we talk about premature mortality, we connect it with truck traffic, we connect it with um, how we host two truck route through truck routes and one local, uh, and we make some improvements right here. Um, and here we talk about adult diabetes. So again, I just want to reiterate that this column here is from the existing conditions report from the borough office: diabetes, obesity, mental health. We connect it with healthy people twenty thirty. Uh, we request that zoning designations codify special purpose areas that are third spaces. And we're looking at, you know, areas within the district which are quite scarce that can be created as either green spaces or can be outfitted with adult fitness equipment. And then we go into some metrics about diabetes prevention program and physical activity. Um, and this actual concept is repeated further down um, with regards to uh, where there are locations in our district that can be can be improved to suit that you know uh, to suit that purpose as a, a third place uh, low tree cover level four heat street these are from the existing conditions report and then we talked about sort of in compliance and new development and not planting the trees that they're supposed to based on the um, the housing code uh, for the certificate of occupancy. So, um, and like I said here, this is where we talked again about a few places for public assembly. Uh, we have a metric here about 49% live within work walking distance, but that means 51% do not. So we, Based on the um, the uh, the fellow from the Fund of New York, Odette Holtzinger, in a report that he did a few years ago in 2013, we identified the sites that he um, had identified: Flappish Public Library, Holy Innocents Church, the MTA substation, uh, the Liberty Lot uh, by the Midward Sports Fields, so on and so forth. As you can see, Erasmus Hall, and of course, Newkirk Plaza. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I think you all kind of get the point of um, where we went with that document. And I'll turn it back over to the co-chairs. Um, and <clears throat> if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Great. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, for that overview. And uh, it looks like we will have some questions here. Um, just initially, just to reiterate where we stand here with with this document, this is this is intended as sort of a working document, correct? Something that will be, um, you know, that we can use moving forward. Because, okay, yeah, because clearly there's a um, 
I wouldn't say a universe, but there's certainly many more issues that, uh, that can be worked into this analysis, no doubt. Right, because what we say in our cover letter is that, you know, with regards to the zoning text amendments that are being proposed by the Adams administration and the, the city of Yes, there could be more tools that we can pull to apply to this document, right? Um, so, yeah, it is a work in progress. It is fluid. We will continue to add to it. Great, great. Okay, so uh, yeah, it does look like we have any more questions before we do show. Before we do so, I just want to um, uh, tie in uh, Talisha as well, our co-chair. Just wanted to see if um, you had any uh, questions or thoughts at this point, or should, whether we should just proceed with uh, the other questions. No, I think I'm good. I was gonna uh, sort of add in the city of yes thing that Chair uh, Brown just mentioned. Uh, she took care of that. Um, and I, I can I can go ahead and uh, pass it over to Carl, who had his hand up first. Carl. Hey, good evening, Talisha. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, my question will be brief. It's about um, process. So since this is a working document, uh, I'm just curious, is the thinking that, um, you know, basically, I guess, every you know every subsequent or every two subsequent land use committee meetings um there'd be a recap of you know the evolution of the document basically and then you know seeing where the current thinking lies or is the idea that this is a working document and at some point in time the people in this committee would review it and then if there's a motion we put that stuff in front of the board to see if the board agrees in general with the things we'd like to advocate for you know, that's my question, like basically process. Can I jump in uh, <laughs> first and just say that I don't I don't think that every uh, committee meeting that will give an update on it. But I, I think that at, at this point, it's good if we sort of um, build uh, a, a sort of uh, something that we can use in order to tie in uh, future topics that we're discussing as a committee. Um, and this is a good way to for us to sort of organize as well in understanding what are some of the greater needs for our district uh, and um, how that ties into, again, the city of yes, um uh initiative that's that that the mayor has and any other initiatives and it, it also uh ties in uh stuff that we have going on locally i mean including uh what's going to happen with new kirk plaza uh <laughs> i know sean that's a big one for you um uh, and also um even if we're talking, discussing African burial grounds, uh, and as you saw in the chart that Chair Brown just um, uh, introduced and presented, uh, you know, like even with the building like 1640 Flatbush Avenue, um, if not if, but when we have more proposals in the district. Uh, that have to do with that, like what are some of the needs and we can sort of go to the, this document as being uh, an outline and a framework that we already worked on for things that will lead to an overall healthier environment uh, for our district. Um, I, I don't know if Chair uh, Brown, if you wanted to say something else, you had your... <laughs> No, okay. Uh, 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 Sean, did you have something that you wanted to say or was it hand up? I quick, quickly want to note that I did put the, uh, yes, it's the 2017 Planning Fellow Report. That is now in the links. And um, Steve Cohen wins Planning Fellow Report trivia tonight. Um, but we, that, you know, and also I want Bill Cooch to know that, you know, these reports do become sort of useful living documents. They go on past the date of their, you know, you don't just hand them in. We really do use this stuff. Um, and that report I just sent to um, our, 
our three city council members, um, are, I'm sorry, our four, three of whom supported um, intro a new bill 680-A, which was introduced by council member Krish, um, Krishnan of Queens. And when I saw that bill, I, I wrote to Odette and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like this council member read your report and then turned it into an intro. So it is, it is a bill that is passed that does, is supposed to sort of facilitate the ability of communities to turn small sliver lots and it even specifies dead ends um which is a thing that Oded I remember him being very excited about so I think this 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 exercise is also an opportunity to remind the city that this is the um, we rank 59th out of 59 community board in terms of access to green space and with that legislation this report our ability to weigh in on it um I just want to you know take advantage of this sort of the opposite of a perfect storm of this, you know, this great dovetailing of things. Um, so read that report. It's really good. There's a bunch of others on the website under projects. Thanks. Uh, I know that Barden has his hand up for a little while now. I hope you remember what you were going to say. <laughs> I do indeed, which is you all put that like table together from scratch because I think it's spectacular. I mean, it's basically sort of retrofitting what we think is best for the neighborhood and the terminology that they're requesting. And I haven't read through the whole thing, but from what I saw, I think it's an absolutely brilliant job. So are we as a board going to be expected to do this from each of our committees, sort of, you know, reviewing all the various other categories that are in the comprehensive plan? And then each committee will then have to put together a similar table to submit to say, well, this is how we would like things to go, say, from uh, you know, our Health and Human Services Committee, such that we can best benefit from the comprehensive plan. It's a sort of idle curiosity, but but I my basic point is a compliment to you all who did it because I think it's great. Uh, it, it's, hardly, it's, it's hardly it's idle hardly idle because it would be a lot of work. Sorry. Chair Brown, did you, you want to respond to that? Sorry, I don't Sorry. again having connectivity issues. So um so I certainly think it's an exercise that you know committees can work on. Um, but you know, just to preface that right now all we have is, is the existing conditions. Your committee can certainly look at existing conditions and see how, um, uh, you know, what kind of um, interventions can come about, even if they're not land use and 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 zoning. So in community environment, basically, we go back to the 59 for 59 and we just harp on that and we generate a similar table to submit with all of the CD14 documents. But I think this is a brilliant template. Thanks. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, I'm just really curious about where the plan's going to go. We just have a report of exist, existing conditions, and that's why we felt it was necessary to sort of, you know, nudge some ideas towards Borough Hall to say, hey, you know, these are some tools in your toolbox right now, and this is how we can solve our problems. And if you solve our problems, you could probably solve other problems throughout the borough. But yeah, it is definitely a good exercise to think about with the realm of your committee. Absolutely. Thanks. Um, Melissa, you had your hand up. Thanks. This is all great. So th thank you for this. I was just wondering if we were going to also be taking a look at all at the um, this is coming from citywide from the mayor's office, but the get stuff built, the, the blast report. Um, this is a report on the, the, the building and land use approval streamlining task force so blast. Great acronym, but they, they just came out with that. Um, and it's, they actually came up with like 111 recommendations to better streamline housing land use approvals of the, all, all of these pieces. I, just sort of presentation on, on on that last night, and there's a lot that seems like it'll be coming down to individual community boards and I mean, seeker and a lot of different pieces. Uh, 
Uh, Stephen, do you have something you wanted to say? You have your hand up? Okay. Yeah. Um, with regard to the item that had to do with uh, finding jobs for, uh, I guess, uh, unemployed youth or, or younger adults, and um, I guess uh, with regard to the nearby industrial areas, um, do we have any information in terms of the extent to which that those industrial zones nearby employ um, CB14 residents or uh, hire locally? And is there anything we could do to encourage that uh, for those businesses? Um, yeah, I'm just, just throwing that out there. Um, I guess my uh, second thing related to that, um, just because I know that there were formerly industrial areas in Gowanus that have rezoned to provide for large residential developments. I guess my only slight concern would be I don't want to, I wouldn't want to dissuade, say, a lot owner that's vacant um, from some sensible, you know, large housing development that makes sense because I'm always in favor of. Um, you know, additional housing um, you know, within reason, but um, uh, I think in, in do, formerly industrial areas are sometimes good targets for large scale residential development, in my opinion. Thanks. Chair Brown, did you want to respond to that? Sure, because I, <clears throat> I sort of did a deep dive. So we uh, in CB in CD 14, we only have a very, very small portion. Maybe it's only like two blocks of manufacturing in our district. Most of the manufacturing is to the west and in uh, um, 12 and in eight. <clears throat> so um, not a lot of impact for us um, with regards to um, rezoning for housing uh as opposed to uh the continuation of manufacturing um so what the and i know we have no data on how many residents that live in cd14 are employed in that area which is why the recommendation was to make it um an industrial business zone because then the buildings can the the scope of the manufacturing like as you see in Guanas and as you see in Sunset Park can get a little bit bigger and thus employ more people. Um, and we would ask for something similar to the FRESH program where, you know, if you increased manufacturing and in industry, there would be an incentive to hire locally, uh, payroll taxes, so on and so forth. So again, these are just big concepts to solve problems in terms of employment. Um, but it, it doesn't have a lot of impact in terms of um, sort of edging out housing in CD14. It was just looking at the surrounding area and looking for opportunity. I hope that answers your question. It does, thanks. Anyone else have? Uh, anything else that you want to comment on regarding this? Okay. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll just, Sean, I'll yeah, just, sorry. Um, I would just encourage, you know, if, if those of you taking a look at the maps and, and especially, you know, jumping off of Barden's, um, you know, taking a committee's perspective on the maps and figuring out which ones um, might be a, um, a a topic for discussion in committee. Think about, too, one of the things that I um, feel like is lacking is a, a sense of overlay with the maps. Um, so think about what if we're looking at, say, asthma rates, 
um, what map would you want to see overlaid with asthma rates? Maybe we should be looking at truck routes on top of asthma rates and and stuff like that. Just try to there. There's all of this descriptive data, but they're not even necessarily. Well, in some cases, but they're not they're not um, suggesting as many correlations as they could be. And then the other thing that drove me a little bit crazy or just had me wanting more was um, that there's no change. There's no change data. So especially like with the um, with the um, racial breakdown, um, it would have been really useful in this district to look at the um, the racial the percentages a lot from 2010 to 2020 so that we could actually see an illustration of the huge loss in the black population we've had in this district and how that overlays then with other things that we're looking at on these maps. So um, just trying to make more connections than are being suggested at this point. And that's even before we get into a whole bunch, you know, a, a bunch of um, recommendations for the board. That's just making sure that we're looking at, you know, at, at these through all of the frames available to us. Um, and I think that'd be great work for committees. Thank you. I agree. Uh, Florencia, do you have a question or comment? Yeah, good night. I just wanted to say that uh, some of the things that I didn't hear that affect uh, the Northern section of our community is like gun violence and so uh also that the health care or the health clinics that are within our area do have hello we can still hear you okay do have uh uh some uh data on the black population and also well bipoc uh, mostly uh, blacks within the BIPOC population where health is concerned and uh, the mortality rate for babies and uh, things of that nature. So just uh, something to think about, I think, or discuss. Thank you for that, Florencia. Um, Elizabeth? Hey, yeah, just another thing I was thinking about that I, I have read through this report before, um, but I wasn't looking at it with the specific eye at that time, um, and I don't think it's in here, um, is data about um, in-home gas versus electric appliance usage and so forth. Um, there was a recent study um, in a NYCHA housing in the Bronx that showed that switching to induction stoves really improved um, the air quality, which can affect childhood asthma rates and so forth. Um, and I know that it's kind of a, a new topic, um, both like, you know, in Brooklyn, in New York, in the US and so forth to work on electrifying appliances to create better in, um, indoor air conditions. Um, but I think it would be something that I'd be interested in seeing information about percentages, you know, within our district and what um, we and the borough president's office in the city in general can do to help make these improvements um, more accessible to folks because I know there are large cost barriers associated with this as someone who's recently switched my stove from a gas to electric for this reason um, to get an induction. So it's very, it was very expensive um, in terms of um, the electrical work, um, but, you know, just it's, it's something I think that, you know, if we had better data, we might be able to get better planning and help push for better um, proposals to make this easier to also help um, get those rates down. I'm going to drop the link to the um, Bronx study into the chat as well. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, uh, I just wanted to make sure, Florencia, did you have something else that you wanted to say or is your hand just still up from the last comment? <laughs> okay, uh, uh, Chair Brown. Oh, so, so. I, I just wanted to respond to, to both of those. Um, so gun violence and access to health care and daycare are all part of Healthy People 2030. Um, and they are definitely on the radar for this table. However, right now, um, because the original initiative was land use, 
Uh, we couldn't quite find a solution for either of those problems through land use. I mean, um, zoning for uh, community facilities, which include, you know, um, clinics and daycare is already included in the process. And I want to see where it's going to go with the city of yes. Um, most new construction has to include a com community facility if it has a ground floor, you know, space for a commercial facility. And then honestly, um, at, in the time that we have, we couldn't be creative enough to fix or to intervene with gun violence with land use. And then with regards to um, the, the switch from natural gas to induction, I know that the city has an initiative to phase out natural gas in all buildings, uh, whether or not that goes through um, based on the lobby of Nat Grid, so on and so forth remains to be seen, uh, but that's also on the radar. Um, and is sort of been touched upon with land use and uh, city planning uh, and Department of Building initiatives. So we're just kind of like hanging out and waiting to see where things develop with that, but it's definitely on the radar. Thanks. Uh, Sean. Joanne, if you just if you would just clarify what you just said when you when you're talking about we and it's it was on the radar and it just um, you couldn't. Um, see it through the lens of land use. Is that particular we that you're mentioning the borough board discussions that you've had? And there's no specifically in the cre creation of the table. Okay. You know, I mean, going through all of the, you know, the, the maps that were in the plan of existing conditions and then putting them in the table and then looking at them through healthy people 2030, it didn't seem like there was a solution right now for those issues. Okay, thank you. Uh, Elizabeth, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to note. Um, yeah, definitely um, excited about uh, seeing how those plays out with regards to electrification. Um, I believe that that law only applies to new construction. So there's not necessarily anything about older construction. So I think it would be useful. And I know, like I said, it might be a little early, early just to make sure that that's on the DP's radar for when they keep on these reports to just, you know, try to get some information of if we can see the differences between those, not just in individual levels, like I know you can monitor your own air quality inside, but how it affects, um, you know, the asthma rates and so forth in, in an aggregate um, sense and, you know, nearby housing. Um, if you get like, if, if I live by something that gets a lot of electrification instead of more gas, does that affect me whether or not, you know, my specific um, individual residence has different issues? Um, just, just some data I'd like to see. I know that we don't have it right now, um, but for our feedback, thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Florencia? Yeah. yeah, I also wanted to ask about education and the, the better education in within like Title I school districts and just, you know, because there are times when many youths drop out and that becomes a part of it. And we have no land space for like community youth centers, which I think could be a part of it. And some of the youth that are on the street that are getting involved in all that, they really just need jobs or something to do. So, um, you know, I was hoping that that would be an earlier part of the conversation rather than later, just saying. Thank you. Yeah, that's right, Sorrentia, thank you. Uh, anyone else? Have any comment questions? Nope. Uh, well, Greg, do you have anything else that you wanted to say? No, I don't think so. But if we, I guess we just need to circle back now in terms of uh, direction based on this conversation. Um, so as we've been talking about, um, uh, the, the table that uh, Chair Brown has presented, and um, briefly we mentioned the uh, the covering narrative that uh, uh, Sean Campbell has put together. Um, so, just just to sort of wrap it up in terms of again it being the working document, and you know there's there's certainly more work to do here. But in terms of uh, next steps, and I'll, I'll 
students over to Sean in terms of what your intention was to uh, to submit these materials at this time. Um, well, the the form from from the borough president's office has to be done by by Friday. So I was just going to extrapolate from this conversation. I was taking notes. I've got the chat copied, um, and it's all recorded in case I forget. Um, those those questions. I meant to have it right in front of me. We're we're pretty. They they weren't they weren't deep. Um, they're just. Uh, was there anything in the data that surprised you? Um, is there anything that you think is lacking? Is there anything you think is misrepresented? So, I'm just going to respond, and it's all along the different. Um, you know, they ask those same four questions for all of their. Categories, there's demographic, there's health, there's socioeconomic, there's land use, transportation, environmental, neighborhood conditions. And so, you know, I will fill in where, where we feel that there wasn't a, a good map for. Of, um, you know, drilling down better on some education data or, and, and I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll note that the categories aren't evenly split and um, I, and I'll. You know, I'll review for any surprises, but I think that um, we kind of have a sense of our own community. Um, and, and so I don't know if there was any shocks. It's just a matter of how they correlate. So that has to happen at the end of this week. Um, and then I defer to the to the chair and the co chairs on when you think the it, it sounds like you feel like the. The, the this thing. The grid um, can go to to Borough Hall that it's been reviewed in committee and it can go as a first draft to Borough Hall or did you wish to wait for further review or so I defer to you on, on the next step for that. And then, you know, I also defer to you, but also to other committee co chairs on whether anybody wants to pick up this ball and run further with it in terms of perspective from other committees to just keep this as a sort of living work in progress throughout, you know, this term in the, you, this, you know, our meeting season um, and turn something into the borough president at the end, you know, in June or something like that, whether whether they're inviting that or not. Um, I don't think they'll turn away. Uh, work that's being done at a community board level. So for their consideration, that's kind of how I had it mapped up in my um, head. Okay, um, you yeah, know, I appreciate that. And uh, you know, Chair Brown uh, will probably want to speak to this as well. So I'll turn it over to you as well. Uh, well, Steve was in, in front of me. So let's get his feedback and then I'll give my comments. Okay, uh, Steve, please proceed. I mean, possibly a uh, a minor point, but just in terms of um, uh, incomplete um, stuff on the uh, that that was provided. I noticed on uh, there's a there there was a slide on total number of school seats needed. That was page ninety six of the presentation, and uh, the whole eastern part of Brooklyn is like not included on the legend, so it's unclear if. That was just skipped over, or if they're saying that there is no need for additional K through eight seats for uh, the entire eastern part of Brooklyn. Um, so I think that should be clarified. And if for whatever reason they didn't collect data on all that that huge swath of Brooklyn, I don't know how effective this map is. I mean, maybe it's somewhat effective for the neighborhoods that was were considered, but you know, it's kind of disappointing uh, if that's the case for the rest of us. I see Sean already taking a note on that. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, before before we get to Chair Brown, I, I just wanted to uh, acknowledge uh, Assembly Member Brian Cunningham is, is in attendance as well. Um, uh, I just like to uh, ask the Assembly uh, Member if like to say something, or we'll just proceed with our uh, conversation at this point. Hey, Greg. Uh, hey, Sean. Hi, Chair. Um, just stopped in, um, obviously heading back to Albany, any board meetings, um, being there in person as a board member. So just stopping in to listen and get a pulse on the neighborhood, see what's going on and see for ways that we can fight for you in Albany. I um, would love to connect with this board um, and this committee, um, particularly about the governor's housing plan at some point. Um, but here just to listen and to learn um, from you guys. Thank you so much for hosting tonight. And thank you. Thank you very much for checking in. Um, 
Okay, then I guess we'll uh, then proceed to uh, Chair Brown to continue the conversation. Okay, so with regards to next steps, um, I, I really think that we have some really smart, smart people on this board. Um, and I think that our voice is extremely valuable at the very beginning of the process of building this comprehensive plan. So what I would like to do is send the table. It has a cover letter that basically says that it is fluid and a work in progress, and it will continue to be updated and submitted to that office. So what I would like to do is send it as it is, but I'm also gonna add this really smart suggestion from Florencia with regards to setting aside uh, community space uh, with regards to land use and zoning, I'll, I'll figure out the wording for it, for community youth centers that can, um, you know, facilitate reduction in crime and increase, uh, you know, perhaps youth employment. But what I would like us to do is send the table. I don't think there's anything wrong with having context, uh, or, I'm sorry, having contact with Borough Hall often and early and often. So um, we'll send our comments through the forum. We'll send uh, the table as it is with the addition from Florencia. And then as committees get together and discuss this item and come up with items that they wanna add to it, we will grow and we will continue to send it. Because um, I would prefer they, I don't think they will work in a silo, but I, I think we're really smart people. And I think we have a lot to offer and a lot of nuance about our own district that can be applied throughout the borough. So that's where I stand with that. I hope you support, um, the sending of the table as it is. And, uh, and, and we'll just keep building on it. Thank you for that. Yeah. And so I guess at this point, perhaps, uh, if, if we can gather consensus on this question, we can uh, proceed in that fashion. I think, Sean, in, your, in the note, you're suggesting that perhaps we send it on Friday, allow a few more days if anyone else would like to uh, provide any further input, and then and then we'll send it out as, as, our, as our first submission on, on the subject. So, um, I don't know, do, do we need to take a vote on that? Do, uh, looking for a, a procedural question on that, if we should uh, get a consensus. Well, that's Sean, I guess, if, uh, in terms of the process. Here. Deferring to Joanne on this, really, but uh, Joanne's uh, rule of thumb in the committees has been consensus is the name of the game, right? Mm hmm Okay. All right. So uh, maybe I'll throw it out to the group here. If 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 everyone is uh, uh, in support of this approach, um, I'll ask it in the negative. If there are any folks who have any uh, questions or concerns in, in proceeding in this fashion, uh, please, please let us know. Either raise your hand or... Uh, um, I'll open it up to the floor here. Okay. Uh, seeing none, then I, I think we do have consensus in terms of this approach. Um, thank you all for that. Um, and so I think the intention then will be to, um, to submit this first, uh, this first uh, package to, to the borough president on Friday. And in the meantime, if anyone else has any further, please, uh, uh, we can forward that to uh, to Sean so that we can make sure that that's inputted into uh, the final product. So thank you all. Um, okay, uh, just I know we have uh, that was our agenda item for this evening. Um, the only other thing I'd like to mention, and Sean, you had mentioned at the top that Bill Cooch is in attendance, one of our uh, fellows. Um, I know we haven't um, had a chance to uh, talk in more detail about his work. Um, so I'll just say, we'll just say hello to him collectively at this point, unless um, uh, Bill, at least you'd like to say hello to all of us. And uh, and then uh, um, I don't know what the intention there in terms of the timing and, and, and seeing a little bit more about um, about your work, but uh, you'd just like to say a few words before we wrap up here. Um, sure, hello everyone. Uh, nice to be with you tonight. I was interested to listen in and hear everything um, that's going on and um, as you uh, likely know, I'm looking into um, a lot of information on uh, on housing in the community district and um, yeah, developing uh, a lot of data and trying to work that into a, a, a form that uh, is 
digestible, readable, and uh, presentable to you all. So hopefully um, in the coming weeks, in the next month in February, hopefully I'm getting to a point where I can at least have some uh, more drafts being passed along to you all to um, take a look at on, come on, ask questions on um, as I work towards a, a final a final product, which um, like some of the other reports we saw tonight, I hope is still useful enough to you. It's uh, lasts for a while and you're still using it uh, down the road. So um, thanks everyone, I appreciate it. Okay, and thank you both. Um, so we look forward to that uh, in, the, uh, in the near future. All right, um, I believe that's uh, everything on our list. Uh, I'll turn it back over to Lisa just to make sure, but um, uh, to see if there's anything further that uh, that we should cover this evening. Nope, I think that's it. All right, so uh, I get to, at this point we'll conclude. Um, so again, thank you all for attending this evening. It's been a, a great conversation, and um, you know we'll be looking for uh, that submission on Friday. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all. Hey, Thanks, everyone. folks. Have a good night. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.